Caught with cash in San Diego after his wife Lacey disappeared, Scott Peterson was ultimately convicted in Lacey's death. But investigators are still theorizing over how exactly she was killed, and there's now a new push to prove that Scott is innocent. The disappearance of Lacey Peterson and the subsequent discovery of her and her unborn son Connor's remains was one of the most disturbing American news stories of the mid-2000s. The 27-year-old mother-to-be, who was eight months pregnant, had gone missing on Christmas Eve. A huge search followed. Sadly, in April the following year, the remains of mother and baby were discovered a day apart from each other on the shore of San Francisco Bay. Though the bodies were badly decomposed, their identities were confirmed by DNA tests. Lacey's husband, Scott Peterson, who had claimed to have nothing to do with her disappearance, was later found in San Diego, disguised and carrying thousands of dollars in cash in what was assumed to have been an attempt to flee over the Mexican border. He was arrested on suspicion of murder and put on trial, an event that garnered extensive media coverage. If those things are impossible, then this man murdered Lacey Peterson. Scott Peterson was found guilty of Lacey and Connor's murders in 2004. He was sentenced to death before being resentenced to life in prison without parole in 2021. The story continues to be of great interest today, with Scott's actions and the exact details of the murders continuing to be a point of discussion among investigators and true crime enthusiasts more than two decades later. The prosecution for Scott Peterson's trial had very little direct evidence to work with. There was no murder weapon, no DNA evidence linking Scott directly to the crime, and no proof in either their home or his vehicle that he had transported the body of his pregnant wife to San Francisco Bay where she was found. Scott Peterson's trial went ahead regardless, with the prosecution building its case around a wealth of circumstantial evidence concerning the suspect's behavior before and after his wife's disappearance. Evidence included inconsistencies in the alibis he gave to friends and family, extramarital affairs, a homemade concrete anchor he was accused of using to weigh down Lacey's body, and reservations about his marriage and impeding fatherhood that may have motivated the killing. The prosecution also established a soft kill theory to explain the lack of fatal injury marks on Lacey Peterson's body, suggesting that she may have been suffocated or strangled, most likely on Christmas Eve, the day of her disappearance when Scott claimed alternately to be fishing or golfing. Though Scott Peterson was convicted of murdering his wife and unborn son, Lacey Peterson's cause of death was never ascertained during the trial. However, some experts have since come forward and offered their own theories about how she might have died. In 2005, forensic psychiatrist Dr. Keith Ablo, who specializes in offering expert insights into the psychology of suspected criminals during their trials for court TV, published a book, Inside the Mind of Scott Peterson. In the work, he dives deep into the convicted murderer's psychological profile and offers a theory about Lacey's final moments. Ablo suggests that Scott might have used a large flashlight resembling a metal pipe to murder his wife before drowning her in their pool. The author notes that Scott's grandfather had been killed with a similar instrument, a rusty pipe. According to the psychiatrist, Scott may have remembered this incident when planning the murders of Lacey and Connor. Scott Peterson has remained in prison since his trial, but he continues to deny murdering Lacey. In 2024, the Los Angeles Innocence Project, a nonprofit organization that has taken on his case, claimed that it had fresh evidence that challenges his conviction and is now pushing for a retrial. The same year, Scott himself said he believes that Lacey Peterson was abducted and murdered by burglars operating in the area at the time she disappeared from their home in Modesto, California. One former investigator agrees that there may be something amiss, Brian Spatolsky, who was a Modesto fire investigator at the time of Lacey's disappearance. He was tasked with investigating a van fire that took place the following day, within a mile of where she went missing. In March 2024, Spatolsky said that blood found in the back of the van should be properly tested to see if it belongs to Lacey or Connor, which could affect the investigation's findings. Why didn't this get brought up? Others, like former Modesto police detective Al Brocchini, remain convinced of Scott's guilt. He did it. Jury got it right. 